Hey guys, in this video, we're gonna talk about can you get a HELOC on a rental property? And the answer is Hey guys, in this video, we're gonna talk about can you get a HELOC on a rental property? And the answer is yes, absolutely you can get a HELOC. Now, it's not necessarily gonna be called a HELOC, but it's the same exact thing. So let's start by just defining and describing what a HELOC is. A HELOC, H-E-L-O-C, it's an acronym for Home Equity Line of Credit. And that's gonna typically refer to your personal home, your primary residence. However, if you have a rental property, you can still go get a line of credit. It's just not gonna typically be called a home equity line of credit because it's not a primary residence. Some banks and credit unions may still refer to it as a home equity line of credit. My personal banks and credit unions, they just refer to it as a revolving line of credit. So what they're going to do is they're going to allow me to borrow against the equity that I may have in a rental property. So let's just use a super simple example. Let's say I have a rental property that's worth $100,000, but I only owe $30,000 on that property. Well, there's $70,000 worth of equity in that property. Banks are typically going to lend anywhere from 60 to 80% on that equity. So for simple math, let's just assume 70% and that's actually what my personal banks and, and credit unions that I have lines of credit through were lending to me at. They're going to give me 70% or let me tap into 70% of that equity. So again, $100,000 value of a property, you owe 30, right? So there's $70,000 worth of equity there. Well, what they're going to do is they're going to say, hey, Dave, we're going to take 70,000. We're going to multiply that by 0.7 and we're going to allow, allow you to have a line of credit on that 70% of 70,000. Let's do some simple math here. 70%, so 0.7 times 70,000 is 49,000. So in this scenario, the bank's gonna say, hey, we're gonna let you have $49,000 worth of, worth of a line of credit or a revolving line of credit or a home equity line of credit. Again, the home equity typically refers to your primary residence, but some banks may refer to it a little differently and that's okay. It's, it's really the same thing at the end of the day. But in this scenario, they're gonna give you a, a line of credit or a home equity line of credit for $49,000 in this scenario. Now, be aware that they're going to put a second mortgage on the property. So in this exact scenario, $100,000 value, $30,000 worth of debt on it, there's 70,000 in equity. They're going to give you 70%. That's 49,000 that they're going to allow you to go to go borrow. They're going to lend to you, but they're going to have a second mortgage on this property because the first mortgage is the 30,000 in debt that you have in this example, in this scenario. So if you borrow that $49,000 and you go use it on other rental properties, rehabs, maybe another business venture, maybe you're just wanting to, to, to fix and update this existing property that has the equity, it doesn't really matter what you do with that money, but just know that it's debt and it has to be paid back. So if you were to go sell that property, you're gonna have to pay back the $30,000 on the first mortgage, and you're gonna have to pay back the $49,000 on that revolving line of credit or home equity line of credit or whatever that particular bank is calling it. So you're gonna have a first mortgage for 30 and you're gonna have a second mortgage for that 49,000. Not a big deal. I love borrowing and using the equity that's in my existing properties to go buy more properties. And sometimes I may have a property that needs a bunch of work and I'll borrow from one property's equity to fix that property up and then I can refinance and there's all these creative things things that we can do to use and tap into the existing equity, either in our personal home or in other properties that we may own. Now, there is going to be some minimums and there's going to be some underwriting and you're essentially getting a loan when you go get a HELOC or a personal line of credit or revolving line of credit. Again, there's multiple names for the same thing, but you are essentially going to have to go to a bank or a credit union and get that type of product, that loan or that, uh, that HELOC. And that's going to cost a little bit of money up front in underwriting and applications. But the beautiful thing is, is typically once you get them open and set up, and it's also going to require an appraisal most of the time too, because they're going to need to know, hey, what is the equity? We can't just guess here. Let's get it appraised. And then they're going to typically lend 70-ish percent of the equity, not the value, the equity. So they're going to take the appraisal. They're going to, they're going to subtract off, you know, what your existing debt is. And then what's left is considered equity. And they're typically 
typically gonna lend 70%. Now, the cool thing about the home equity line of credit or the revolving line of credit is, and they're basically the same thing, but the cool thing is, is they're gonna fix a rate typically for you for one year. And then at the end of that one year, you're gonna have to renew that line of credit. I actually have bankers that will do two and three year fixed rates and lines of credit for longer periods of time. But when your revolving line or your HELOC expires, the cool thing is, is you can renew it and that may or may not require more appraisals. Oftentimes they can do what's called a BPO, a broker price opinion, which is basically an in-house way of determining the value of that property. So the answer is yes, don't overthink it guys. This is something that we as real estate investors utilize and use all the time. It's one of my favorite tools in our belt because it allows us to unlock equity and essentially you know, use the resources of the wealth and the equity that's in a property to pull it out without having to sell the property. That's really the main reason that we like doing this. Of course, if we sell the property, we're gonna be able to get the equity, but we're also gonna have a taxable event and we're also gonna lose that asset, assuming it's a rental property that's rented. So instead of selling that property, we can borrow against the equity that's in it. And here's the cool thing. If you were to go get that forty-nine dollars or $50,000 worth of equity in a line of credit or a HELOC and you borrow it, that's not income. You don't have to pay taxes on that money. That's debt. So don't overthink it, keep it simple. And guys, check out Burr Method Mastery if you wanna learn more about buying and selling rentals using the Burr Method, doing it with little to no money. That's my passion and I would love to work with you personally. So again, check out BurrMethodMastery.com to learn more. Thanks guys. Mm-hmm.